What's going on guys? In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make gold Miami Cuban chains and bracelets. We're going to make this chain right here in 10 karat white gold. I'm gonna show you the complete process of how to make these chains from getting the 3D designs made, to printing the wax, to getting the links casted, to polishing and finishing. I'm also going to talk about some very important things you need to know about making these chains. Let's not waste any time, get right into it. All right guys, first, let's talk about everything that you will need to make these. The first thing that you will need is a Mars Elegoo 3D printer. These printers cost around $300 and they will come with everything that you will need, including a USB drive that will have the printing software. You will also need castable resin. There are many different types of resins on the market. In this example, we're going to be using the power resins burn resin. You will also need a primer to make sure you get consistent good results without failed prints. You will need an alcohol which is at least 91% or higher. I will have an Amazon link to all of these items in the description under the video. So the first thing that we will do is go on a website called cgtrader.com and download the 3D files. There are going to be many different styles of Cuban chains. For this example we're going to make this style right here. The 3D files are very cheap. They will cost around $10. So let's go ahead and download the files and take a look at them. So right here we have the links with the sprue. So when making Cuban chains one of the links in the chain has to have a gap. A lot of times the designers that are making these files don't understand how printing and casting works and they put a very small gap in the link, which is not going to work. This gap right here is simply too small. When the link is casted, there isn't going to be any empty space. So you have to get a 3D designer to edit the file and make a bigger gap. And here's the edited file. This is the file right here that we're going to print. Next we have the box lock, we have the second part of the lock, and we also have these clips right here which will go on the lock. When you purchase the 3D file, you will pay for the file one time and you can use it as many times as you like. The file is yours. Before printing the chain, figure out how long your chain is going to be and count how many links you will need. An easy way to do this is to import a file into Rhino 3D and count that way. For this chain, we're going to need around 80 links. Next, we're going to take the USB drive that comes with the printer and plug it into your computer. And we're going to open the program that comes on the drive. This program is called Cheeto Box. So let's click on the drive, click on the software file, click Mac OS, click on Cheeto Box, and open up the app. Give it a couple seconds to load. All right, guys, and here's the app right here. We're gonna open up our folder with the STL files and import the first file, which is going to be the links. Drag and drop the file into the app, and here it is right here. Let's zoom in a little bit. So the first thing that we're going to do is click on rotate and click plus 45 two times and the file is gonna stand up straight. Each link on this chain is eight millimeters in width. If you want to change the size of the chain, all you have to do is click on scale and change the percentage. So for example, if you want this chain to be 10 millimeters, all you do is change the percentage to 120. Eight multiplied by 1.2 is 10. So if you want to change the size of the chain, simply do this to every single file that you import. We're gonna keep this chain right here at eight millimeters. So let's change it back to 100%. We're gonna import the next file. Again, rotate it so it stands up straight. We're gonna import everything copy paste the amount of links that we need and we're going to click slice after that we're going to rename our file save it and take the file and import it into the hard drive folder let's disconnect the usb drive and get the printer ready the next thing we're going to do is apply the primer this is going to make sure you get flawless prints every single time with no failed prints use the yellow plastic spatula to spread it out evenly all over the plate make sure you get a nice even coat apply a good amount and put it on uv light for about 10 minutes the next thing that we're going to do is pour resin into our machine fill it up about a quarter way and attach the plate plug in the usb drive click print find the file click on the play button and the printer will start printing as you guys can see this file is going to take about three hours to print the printer is going to print everything layer by layer make sure you guys close the red plastic lid the resin is very sensitive to light and you don't want light to hit the resin the red plastic case prevents uv light from hitting the resin the printer prints the file layer by layer by using a strong UV light and when the UV light hits the resin, it makes the resin solid. After the file is done printing, the printer is going to raise the plate and your waxes will be ready. This is what the waxes are going to look like, as you guys can see it printed perfect. And the next thing that we have to do is cure them. To cure the resin, we have to put it in alcohol. Take a plastic bin and fill it up about a quarter way with alcohol. The next thing that we're going to do is take our plastic spatula and scrape off all the files into the alcohol. I strongly suggest you guys only use the plastic spatula. I don't use the metal spatula for anything. All that's going to do is scratch up the plate. It's not needed. Once all of the resins are in the alcohol, let it soak for about two minutes and cure. The alcohol is gonna mix with the uncured resin and turn green. Pour out all the alcohol, and the next thing that you're going to do is fill the container with hot water and wash it out for about a minute. Again, drain the water out, and you're gonna do this one more time with cold water. Rinse it out for about one minute and drain it out. After this, put all your resins on the paper towel and let them dry completely. Once the resin is fully dry, we're going to have to clip some of them. Do not clip the links file with the sprues. You have to give the caster the links with the sprue. So never cut the sprues. The only files that are going to require cutting are the box lock files. Cut off the extra sprue on the first one and cut off the extra sprue on the second one. Also the clips have to be cut as well. Cut off the support from the first clip and cut off the support from the second clip. And here's what our resin is going to look like. Here's what the links look like. And here's what the box lock looks like. As you guys can see, everything looks perfect. 
Now the next thing that we have to do is get everything casted into gold. Find a caster in your city and bring them the 3D waxes. Your goal is to get the casting price of $1.50 above the spot price of gold per gram. So for example, if one gram of 10 karat gold costs $25.42, you should pay $26.92. If one gram 14 karat costs $35.24, you should pay $36.74. And if you're doing 18 karat, you should pay $47.23 per gram. Now the thing is this, when you guys make jewelry, the price always depends on the relationship you have with the jewelry maker. When you first start out, they're not going to give you $1.50. You have to cast a lot of items with them and then they will start slowly decreasing the price. They will probably start you out at around $3 per gram. Your goal is to get to $1.50 per gram. Alright guys, and here we have the links casted. Let's take a look at them. So here you guys see we have the regular link. As you guys can see the gap right here, it came out perfect. Here we have the box lock and here we have the pins. Alright guys, so when you cast links, it's very important to tell the caster to cut them all the way at the link. As you guys can see the links on the left, part of the sprue was not cut. And the links on the right, the sprue was cut all the way. It's very important to tell the caster to cut the sprue all the way. The weight of these uncut sprues add up really quick. This is just extra gold that you're giving to your polisher for free. A couple grams of uncut sprues can easily add up to $100. So if you get castings back that have sprues, tell the caster to cut them and to reweigh everything. You can also buy a file and a jewelry clipper on Amazon and cut them and file them yourselves. You want to lose as little as gold as possible. In this example, I'm not going to cut anything. I'm purposely going to keep it to show you guys. So we're making this chain right here in white gold. White gold needs to be rhodium plated. When white gold is casted, it's not really white. You can see the links on the left are slightly more yellow than the links on the right. And when white gold is casted, it looks more gray than it looks white. So all white gold jewelry has to be plated. Plating is done after the links are filed, assembled, and polished. So let's go ahead and take all these casted links and let's see how much they weigh. Let's put them on the scale. And as you guys can see, they weigh almost 63 grams. The next thing that we're going to do is give the links to the polisher and have them assemble the chain. So here's the chain fully finished. A chain like this should cost around $100 to assemble. That's including plating and polishing. The cost of the labor depends on how long the chain is. Let's take a quick look at the chain. Let's take a quick look at the lock. Let's go ahead and unlock the chain. As you guys can see, it works perfectly. Let's go ahead and lock it. As you guys can see, the chain looks perfect. Now let's go ahead and weigh the chain. And as you guys see, the chain now weighs 57 grams. So we lost almost 6 grams after polishing. And I guarantee you guys, if you clipped all the extra metal and filed it down, you would have kept around 3 grams. So we started with 63 grams. Let's say the spot price of 10 karat gold is $25 a gram. So 63 multiplied by 26.50 is $1,670. Plus $100 for labor, that's $1,770. Right now the chain weighs 57 grams, so let's divide that by 57. That means we're paying $31 a gram to make this chain. That's $6 over spot. Because we didn't take off all the extra gold ourselves and the polisher kept it, we're paying $6 over spot. We're paying an unrealistic price to make this chain. That's why it's very important to cut off any extra gold and file it down before giving it to the polisher. Now let's say we would have cut everything and kept an additional 3 grams. So instead of the chain weighing 57 grams, it would weigh 60 grams. So 1770 divided by 60, that means we'll be paying 29.5 per gram, which is $4.5 over spot. That's a lot better than paying $6. Your goal is to get it to around 3 to $3.5 over the spot price. If you're making a lighter chain, that's going to be more difficult, so you have to charge more per gram when you sell it. If you're making a heavier chain, it's going to be very easy to get it to that price. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, please ask in the comments below. Please hit the like button, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.